went way faster than normal. And I appreciate that. How long oh. do you think it cut? It cut like what? I cut like two minutes off. I feel like it cut 20 minutes off, but I like the it's feeling. two minutes. We got a... Let's was prep this time. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new Old Carver Fishing Podcast. We got three in studio tonight. No guests, but we got some good topics we're going to talk about. We're going to do a little talking about some early summer fishing, some uh, premier bait use for catfish. We're going to talk about post-spawn tactics for flathead catfish, which I think will be a great topic for now as spawn is starting to come to a close here in Minnesota. I am Luke Henches. Next to me, we got Danny Two Cats here, and we got the owner of Old Carver Fishing Bait and Tackle, Chewy Godinez Jr. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the podcast. It's been a uh, fishing's been. How do you feel about it, Dan? I feel like I can catch fish on Wednesdays and not on Saturdays. <laughs> you know that happens, and he's referring to league night. We got league, league, catfish league every other Saturday. I might mention also if you guys want to get in on the catfish league, you can pay a nominal fee of fifty dollars every other week to fish against the uh, the area cat fishermen. We it's usually a pretty good pot. Usually you know six seven hundred bucks every other week. It's kind of a fun little event we do. And uh, Dan here's got all the secrets to doing good in league. So can't wait to hear what he's got to say yeah, he's the league champion yeah league champ last year yeah last year Just... there's nothing wrong with first to worst there's <laughs> are you in last uh eventually <laughs> at, the, at this rate yeah. all, all, all it'll take is one cat to double my pounder so, <laughs> so i'm feeling pretty good about that if you guys have any questions uh in regards to what the bait shop has to offer um the catfish league uh, or anything we're going to talk about today, make sure you put it in the comments either here on Facebook, and we are also live on YouTube. If you've never been in part of the podcast, it's quite an experience for everybody. Right, Chewy? Yeah. Chewy, what do you think? I'm thinking... I need you to focus here. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to link your, your new video. My new video? You're on it today? So maybe we should get Chewy to focus. Yeah, he's All thinking right. hard right now. He's... So Luke, I heard you had a fishing date with Chewy the other night. That was a really good night. So talk to Chewy. Jesus, talk dude, to Chewy on, the day bro, before. Really? Talk to Chewy the day before. I, think I was we, like, Chewy, I think let, we got his attention let's here. go fishing. He's like, oh, all right, cool. And he's like, do I need to bring live bait? I said, no, we're good. We're just going to throw plastics. I said, I'll just you know meet you at 530. And we'll do our thing. Go catch some fish. Texted him, uh, middle end of the day. So hey, Chewy, 5.30 at the ramp or what? I didn't hear back from him. <clears throat> Went to the ramp, waited. I was like, okay. Went fishing. Crushed, by the way. Crushed fish. Uh, he, was, uh, he ghosted me like a hot chick I tried to talk to on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. I, hope, I, I, I apologize. Hope you, I, I apologize. He did. He knew it was coming the moment I walked in here, because even his wife gave him some crap about it. Yeah. She well, gave... it was it wasn't just because of that. It was also because I ghosted her all day. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. So Tara's in the house. What's up, Tara? How did it go this past Saturday? Well, <laughs> did you ask your partner? <laughs> <laughs> ask your partner how that went. One, three teams got skunked in last league. What's up, brother? Your your team was one of them. Era, so <laughs> you got some making up to do but my team didn't do that much better i think we only weighed in 11 something 11 something pounds the winning weight last saturday was 103 pounds wow which is giant yeah i got i got <laughs> seven point three yeah we're up we're in the bottom part of that so man don't worry uh, tara just reel in your bait next week you got me bait mother i like your uh photo on your profile it looks two handsome gentlemen in your picture there mom it's really nice I did put out a new video today. Me and Tara were up north at my parents' house a couple weeks ago. And uh, um, we got in some good smallmouth. We got in some pike. We got in some uh, nice walleye. So if you guys get bored, make sure you check out my video at Fish on Luke on YouTube. Other than that, I'm, it's uh, it's been a pretty good year in general. How do you feel about 
the catfish bite so far? Have you been getting on? You've been getting on some though. Yeah, yeah. Every Wednesday night's great. Like, <laughs> get it? I've been on a streak. Yeah. So every Wednesday night's really good, and then Saturday night's really bad. But that's okay because I get a fun Wednesday. It's true. Uh, so the bites, I don't know, as good as you make it, I guess. Yeah, it's true. They're always biting somewhere. Just finding where they're biting is sometimes the hard part. Yeah. You and know, it's like I go all Wednesday nights to scout or scout. Yep. Because I feel like they'll have a couple days to regroup and get back to their old spots. Yep. But I think I might, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I might have to fish more than two spots, Dan. Well, I do. <laughs> but, they're, you know, the rivers change so much. Like every Wednesday I go out, and the last Wednesday I went out. And then the Saturday for league, it went up like four feet. Yep, it and went it up was, a bunch. And it was still, and it went almost, it went up like eight inches while we were out there. So it's always changing, and you go from A to B to what you think is C or yeah. D and E and F, and F is usually when yeah. I when I go to sleep. Yep, F is the the oh, two cat. F. Oh, sorry, the sorry. two nap. That transition from Danny yeah. Two Cats to Danny Two Naps. Oh yeah, <laughs> real quick, real quick. <laughs> this guy, see, we got James in the house. We got Tim Souter asked Red River question mark. No, but last weekend I did fish the Red River. Yep. I fished a uh, a rather large catfish tournament on the Red River in Fargo. First time. So what's cool about that? So Tuzna was mentioning Tuzna did pretty well. Yeah. Um, we we're all within a pound. So interesting thing about the tournament: there's about 32 teams. Um, is $120 a team to enter. Um, the top 13 teams, top 14 teams were all within six pounds of winning. That's how tight it was. Real tight. Tuzna got a pound. Uh, that's North Star Jigs. He got a little over a pound more than us. And he was in, I think, eighth or ninth. We placed 13th. Both of us were out of the money. He had a little oopsie on releasing a slot fish or a bigger fish he shouldn't have. Wow. And it would have probably put them in the money. But that's the part of the call tournaments. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. You can't really go by that in tournaments. You either got to, you do it or you don't do it. And that's what making smart decisions, you know. We didn't make it, we didn't make a single mistake on any um, culling. Um, we didn't release any fish we caught bigger than others that we, because you can't release fish and get a bigger weight. You have, right, if right. once they touch your live well, it's one of your three fish. So you got to, try to be i mean you got sometimes you make mistakes sometimes you get a giant after you have two big ones in your level and there's nothing you can do about it i mean but uh yeah i fished the red river it was a stretch uh he he said it i did pretty good for never fishing the stretch well nobody in that tournament had really fished that stretch before except maybe like two of the local teams i used to fish that stretch from shore um but i ran uh 86 miles on the river in one day i uh, had to come back to the ramp and get gas wow yeah we caught a 17 pound channel cat Right away, half hour into the tournament, we got our slot fish and a 17 pounder the first 30 minutes into the tournament. And uh, the channel cat wasn't doing good. Dead fish don't count. So I'm like, well, we got to go 26 miles back to the ramp now. <laughs> <laughs> so we drove back and let the fish go, weighed it, let it go. And we were sitting really good. We just could not get another big. The next one we thought was bigger ended up being 12 pounds. My scale died. Um, and Kimball had my tournament scale for league, so I didn't have a scale. We're just, we figured it was like 15, 16, which would have put us top five. Ooh. And it was only 12. Because <laughs> it fought. What's going on, Tony? It was, it was an interesting, but long story short, it was a really fun event. Um, I pulled in hot to the ramp, trying to show off at the end of the tournament, and I got my ass chewed by Brad, so I deserved it. I should have came in no wake, but I didn't. So ah. sometimes you make, sometimes you do dumb stuff, you know, it's one of those things, but it was fun regardless. What's going on, Jay? Going on, Jay. And Tara's in chat, but she's not here today. She just got in from Canada. She did. She did a fly in Canada trip um, with her husband and his family. I think is who it was. And, uh, yeah, so she's got stories to tell us next week in the podcast. We're really excited for that. I think she's going to be here next week unless she works. I'm not 100% sure. Whipping shitties at the ramp. Come on. Yeah, I know. Come on, Tara. Leave it alone. We got Tony Caton, the owner of Catch the Fever in the house. In the house. What's going on, Tony? Tony, Tony. 
Okay, she will be here. It is official. It's official. There you go. Official. All right. All we're missing is Scotty. When are we going to have old Scotty too hotty? When's yeah, where did Scott back? go? Did Scott retire or what? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Scott. Yeah, the Jordan ramp is open. That is a nice week and open. big benefit for it's not. I don't. I love it and I don't love it because when I when Jordan wasn't open, I could fish that stretch and hardly ever see a boat. Yeah. But now everyone's gonna launch Jordan. It's the untouched yeah. stretch. I mean, Dan with his smaller boat now he's got a little bigger boat. He can make those runs. But before he would never go there. Now he can go there without a question. Now that it's open, yeah. So in league, there was a person at Lower Rapids. There was a person in between Lower and Upper. There's a person fishing the seam of Upper, and I was at the top of Upper. Yeah, so I'm one of the. Like, I'm one of the boats you're talking about, right? Or is this last weekend? This was last weekend. Jeez, again? Oh, it was just packed in there. Oh my god! Like, and you know, before the Jordan Access opened, you wouldn't see too many people above the rapids. Put your mic a little bit closer. So it was a good, nice place to fish. Oh, that sounds so much better, Dan. Ah, uh, I can hear you. you can, I, we can hear you. Hear your voice. All right, all right, all right, all right. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving James the keys next next time. I'll just do what he says. So, anyways, so we've been having. It's been interesting. Some people have been doing really good on catfish. Like league last weekend was 103 pounds with four fish, which is a crazy. We had Rika just stepped in the house and said hello there. What's going on, Rika? Rika's in the house. Rika's in the house. There you go. Um, he's got his he's got his bottle beverage in hand, hanging <laughs> out. <laughs> he should come in here. Come in here, Rika. Yeah, Rika, you want to yeah. be on? Yeah, we should load him up. <laughs> he just closed the door. I don't know if you guys. I'm wearing a shirt right now. Do you know where this shirt's come? From? Do you know? I don't it, know. I read the back of it though. Does it look familiar? Yeah, it looks like the shirt you were wearing when you cut the big blue. That's kit. right. This is it. Oh yeah. This is my got got meow shirt. I did this got meow in the video. It's the got milk font that I made a shirt for for catfish. I remember in the back it said Red River Luke. Red River Luke. Yeah. 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 Thing looks used. It's yellow on the back <laughs> and green on the front. Yep. It's been through some catfishing days. So I just all I know is that I'm ready to catch more flatheads here. I know a lot. Dude, the fish have been scarred up for a while, a couple of weeks. But as you guys know, fish don't all spawn at the same time. So, I'm we were me and Tara were fishing um, up up north when we were smallmouth fishing. There's actually still fish protecting the bed. Yeah, this late. Water's only seventy one degrees there. Every picture that I saw, it, it looked like they just spawned. It didn't look like the ma- two like, males I caught sight fishing I mean, were both on beds. Yeah, they don't look like they're recovering. They look like they just spawned. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know why uh, they'd still be sitting on the. On I showed you one nest. of the pictures at night, but one of the videos you saw it with me, right? What? One of the videos where you can see the marks on the flathead. I'm talking smallmouth. Oh, smallmouth. Oh. You, you act like flatheads. you don't like bass. Yeah, flatheads have been I scarred love, up for bass. a while. And uh, yeah, it looks like some of the male smallmouth up north last weekend were still on their nest. Like it would just spin around and come right back to it. It was weird. Uh-huh. I kept trying for this one. I was like, God, there's no way that it's actually sitting on eggs. I could not believe that it would be still this late in the year. There's no way. It's happened before. So I pitched a, I pitched a jig at him, a uh, tube jig, and it would not bite it. And I threw a leech on it, inhaled it instantly. Instantly came off the nest, and it wasn't like three feet of water. Was that the one with the video? I didn't put that one in the video because didn't. It was a, you could. I flipped it on this other one. I should have put it in because it was kind of cool. And she had an underwater stick, and you couldn't see it bite on the stick because it was kind of right behind a big rock. Okay. And then all of a sudden, you see it come out of the rock, and I'm fighting it. It was like a, an 18, 19 inch smallmouth. Yeah. It was a pretty good one. The yeah. Ontario, they were still on beds too. Really? But, but you, you did include the uh, um, the footage of the one of the water, right? The one she the swam water. with. Yeah. 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 That was kind of cool. Yeah, Tara was snorkeling on this rock bed. It's it's pretty much. It's the equivalent to a uh, a reef out in the ocean because this it's surrounded by 80 feet of water. This lake's about 150 feet deep. And it's surrounded by 80 feet of water, but it's just rock pile that just drops into the abyss. And the rock pile is 10 feet deep, and there's fish just stacked. When you see the camera, when you guys see the video, there's these rock, <laughs> rock bass. There's like 40 rock bass just piled on one boulder. Wow. And then when I'm fighting my smallmouth, it swims by like a 20-incher in the video. She's 
chasing it with her flippers and, and the camera. So that's kind of a cool video. It's uh, I've never done anything like that, but I was, I was like, you should snorkel that because I used to snorkel that lake when I was a kid and yeah. swim around with the smallmouth because you get really close to them and they don't even care. She's like, I'm doing that. It's good that she n- n- she's going to be the, our new underwater uh, camera. Yeah. Camera. Underwater we'll specialist, we'll call yeah. her. Yep. Yeah, especially when we go fish that uh, I'm gonna, river up that switch. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have her go in the Red River next. So we're gonna, go. she's going to go get some underwater footage. She may go get in the rapids. She's going to come up with a scum line on her. <laughs> <laughs> like the boats. <laughs> if you pull the boat out of the water, it's got the scum line. Tara's face is going to have just scum line all over it. Pressure washer. Yeah, I'll we'll have to pressure washer in the driveway. Just watch the video. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate it, Jay. It didn't. The first day we crushed smallmouth, and I didn't film that day. I was just testing the waters. It was really, really windy, and I'm like, I don't want to film because the lake's super, super clear. And that's yeah. when it was windy. Is because it was good. Is because it was windy. Next day, dead glass. We probably saw. I bet we saw sixty smallmouth over sixteen inches. Wow. And dude, getting one to bite. But going back to that smallmouth, well, what, just jig, jigging the leech, uh, drop shot, what? Tube, tube jigs. Tube jigs, tube jigs and leeches. Um, I threw. We threw mostly. Um, we mostly threw yeah tube jigs. Tube jigs were really good for Tara. That was her first time using tube jigs because kind of showing her, and I didn't have to show her anymore. She kind of figured it out right away. Did you did you show her how to how to how to rig it reverse? Reverse. Okay, never mind. You just rigged it in like a normal tube jig. Okay. Head mm-hmm. in. Head in, eye out. It works great. It would work better if you reverse it. Don't ever say that to me. It would work better if you reverse it. Ghost. It would work better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she loves tube jigs. Jay, Jay, you know... Uh, what are you going to say? Are you going to uh, talk about drop shot shots? Would have sniped and yeah. Drop shot wouldn't have done nothing. I was going to do a drop yeah. shot because actually it does work really good out there. But uh, I didn't even get to like, I didn't even get to a Ned rig. I didn't use a drop shot or nothing. I was going to drop shot a leech because I think that would work really good. But that, That's what I thought you had. J- jigging a leech yet, but... jigging a leech was working great. I mean, Tara had a giant on. I don't know what it was oh. yet. So that lake's in a strain of lakes that have some musky. Not a lot. But it's got the leech lake strain, the big ones. Yeah. And um, there's probably some tigers in there too, but there's huge pike in there. You don't see a lot of them because it's mostly gravel. And the one side of the lake has some weeds. Otherwise, it's mostly just sand and gravel, the whole lake. Super clear, 24 foot clarity, you know. And uh, she was jigging 28 feet of water and it got hit when she was pulling her tube jig right under the boat and it just, just screaming drag on my on her walleye rod and it was uh never got to see what it was but it was definitely a big fish it's either a huge smallmouth one of those giants there's there's nothing like scotty telling the story of hooking up on the fish because he he goes through the whole motion that's kind of like what i just did no you went like that oh just yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. little scotty jigs. just kind of like i guess tyler oh yeah no detail left unsaid <laughs> yeah some people really get into like, stories <laughs> I kind of kept it short, no, it's but get... nonetheless, it got calm the next day when we were filming on the, the show that I, yeah, I put on YouTube. Pretty slow. Pretty slow. Got a couple walleye, both over 20 inches. Got a couple smallmouth. Some didn't make it on show uh, and one pike. And then I got bit off in the video too on a pike. But those pike were deep. Those pike were all 28 feet deep. Everyone we had on and caught that weekend was all 28 foot plus. I know the holes. Not even the holes, just like on the break to the abyss. I was gonna say it's a, it wouldn't be a Carver podcast without Jay talking about drop shots. That's so true. I'm really happy that you commented. <laughs> she said that run still haunts me. I want to talk about Tara, what Tara did this weekend, but I'm gonna let her talk about that yeah, next week because there's a pretty cool video she sent me. It's pretty awesome. She was supposed to send me a clip to show, but I guess she forgot. It's on YouTube. She already put it up. Don't care. Yeah, we can't we can't drop it if she's not here yeah, to we'll talk about it. To we'll wait yeah, for her yeah. to come here. Well, by that time, it'll be it'll be thirty past news. Why would we mm-hmm. talk about it? If, so, if only if she was here. To if talk only she about was it. here. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And yep. Tara Lindsay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah, what do we got yeah, to talk yeah, about? Yeah. I'll catch the. What did that say? All I catch at the Rio is big turtles and no cat. 
That <laughs> <laughs> sounds like there's a lot of turtles in the Rio, huh? Is that yeah, one of your buddies? <laughs> huh? Is that one of your buddies? Yeah. Sounds. This is breaking your heart. We're just kidding, baby. Right. You should probably call Chris. Flores. Chris yeah, Flores. Muddy, Muddy River catfishing. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to give up his spots. <laughs> <laughs> Go ask him where he fishes. See what he says. But other than that, Spawn's bit, Spawn's finishing up. So we're going to talk a little bit today about. I'll go over what I look for when I look for post spawn flatheads. I and mean, this goes for pretty much anywhere in the upper upper Midwest for flatheads. And this isn't. I don't. I don't know a lot about flatheads down south. Yeah. Um. They've been done spawning for a while down there, but I would imagine it's kind of the same thing. Uh, they don't winter down south as much as they do here. Like they don't stack in hundreds in a hole like they do down. They do here. They don't really do that down south because it kind of stays pretty warm. Where they can still feed in the winter. They don't go into torpor. But um, up here in the upper region of flatheads, where if you guys don't know, we're in the northern region of flathead catfish in the country. Um, Taylor's Falls on the Saint Croix River is kind of the last part you're going to catch them. As, that's about as far north as you're going to catch really catch a flathead or target flathead is at the dam below taylor's falls and then you have um pool one downtown minneapolis st paul really the last place you'll probably catch a um um a flathead in the mississippi is probably coon rapids some people catch them once in a while in the upper uh above st anthony falls because the locks used to be open they're closed now okay but so coon rapids dam is kind of the last structural stop for those where they can't really get past it Taylor's Falls Dam is the next one on that river system. And those are the two river systems that directly have the catfish. And obviously they go into tributaries. But in terms of like um, numbers, I wouldn't target anything above Taylor's Falls. And I wouldn't probably even try to target fish above St. Anthony Falls. But so our region's a little different. But, you know, I was talking with a buddy of mine. He just got he just came back from from um, <clears throat> Texas. And he was down there, I think near San Antonio, they were fishing one of the rivers there, and he said that there was a boat, and they had swim baits, um, shad swim baits, you know, the classic shad swim baits, uh, six-inch swim baits with a uh, one-ounce jig head underspin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then he asked him, you know, what it, it thought stripers or something, and it says, no more fishing for cats. So pretty much what I used. So I, I was thinking about that. That that flat you caught with it, but that I mean that one's a tiny jig. That's a pretty small quarter ounce. Yeah, but so I always wondered why. Remember, remember when we were looking at those uh, jerseys that I wanted to get you guys at the flatheads, and then there was one with the chat. It was a the plastic, soft plastic chat that we were like, I don't want to get that one because that one has a lure. Like, you know, we we're thinking, oh, why does it have a bass lure? No, I, I, I remember our exact words. It was. We don't want to wear. Yeah, I don't want to wear a jersey. You're wearing them. I don't give a crap. Tara, no, no shot. <laughs> Sorry, Luke's mom. I want to get you guys jerseys, and they don't want to wear them. So you guys see here, Derek Chewy was talking about catching catfish on a underspin. Uh, I caught my first artificial flat, artificial bait flathead the other day, um, pitching for white bass with an underspin jig, quarter ounce underspin jig with a twister tail, mm -hmm. a luminescent uh, pearl twister tail. I cast it into about two feet of water and inhaled my swim bait i thought i had a giant walleye on digging 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 and i get it to the top of the water i'm like oh my gosh it's a flathead and it is it is not small it ended up being 33 and three quarter inches um probably 20 pounds or so but hoping it was a big walleye and it ended up being kind of cool i didn't mind it was a flathead it all the way to the gullet that thing just inhaled that underspin see i don't see that uncommon because I fish walleyes out there a lot. Yeah. And we catch the random flatheads do you? here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I yeah. never. I never have. Of but these guys are. Do. These guys are targeting them. Well, you're going with out lures. at the same time. So I'm gonna this no. summer. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put on a big swim bait. I got like eight inch, um, Kytex, yeah. Easy Shiners, and I'm gonna go fish some log jams with a big heavy jig head and a sturdy hook. I'm gonna rip that in the middle of a wood pile. I wanna, I'd love to get one to smoke it on one of my uh, bumping rods. I think that'd be super fun. Yeah. I just got two new uh, catch a fever bumps. You just said bumping. bumping yeah. Rods. Have you done any bumping this year? No, I haven't. Oh man. That but I will. So much fun. Jacob did it on the Missouri a few weeks ago, and they just crushed. So I'm sorry, in Missouri, Chewy. You interrupted uh, Luke. He was starting to talk about post spawn catfishing yeah. tactics. Look what and... happened. 
focus today. We're losing it. And I yeah. was in dialed <laughs> in. Was about, we had notes, record. What's going on? James Dockery, one of the best. What's going on, James? So you James. interrupted him. So I love jerseys. So, Luke, you were telling about the territories, <laughs> and then you were going to start talking about where you would target post right. spawn flatheads. Thank you, Tara. That's quit, it. Tara, quit that junk. Three, three to two. I ain't wearing a You're jersey. Always... I've made fun of him for too long to be wearing yeah, one. No, no, no. And I'm only <laughs> asking you because I'm, I'm going fishing one. tonight. It shows camaraderie. Sure. Where do you want me to wear it? Every day you're out fishing. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna go everywhere. We're go to Cabela's, Chile. We're just gonna walk Where in. Where the jersey? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and uh, then any questions they have, we just look at Dan true. and go ask our captain. Well, we're gonna get into. Yeah, I'll take care of that. We're All right. gonna get into a little post spawn. I'm gonna talk about what they do after wintering. In the winter, we're gonna go into the whole process of what a flatheads are doing, and um, so here's what happens. Flathead catfish, like I said again, winter in Minnesota, in the upper Midwest, they winter torpor. It's a state, it's a state of hibernation, but they're not actually hibernating. They don't need hibernate, but they do not need to feed. That's what's cool about flatheads is they can do that. Uh, like our koi fish. So we have koi fish at my parents' house. They don't we don't feed them in a plastic container for seven and a half months. Yeah. They yeah. just sit in there dormant. dormant yeah. And they're perfectly fine at the end of seven and a half months. And my parents are way up north, and they have them in a pond outside. So they just literally sit in the tub in my garage with a bubbler and a water heater just to keep it warm enough where it won't freeze. Correct. Yep. They'll just chill all winter. No food. My parents won't feed them. And they've been there four years now, so, I mean, yeah. obviously. And flatheads do the same thing. People always say they need to feed. They need to feed. They don't. So we can get into the whole wintering thing with flatheads. They do not need to feed. Flatheads don't need to feed in sub-40-degree water. Sub-40-degree water. Flatheads will start to feed tank proven um they did a juvenile study on flatheads for uh um for feeding and they found below 40 degrees none of them ate and obviously there's going to be exceptions where once in a while one will grab some but they don't have to eat that's the whole main point point. and uh once they get out of winter and the water starts warming up they'll start moving sometimes they'll go a long ways to their wintering hole to go back to their spot where they spawn and in pre-spawn i always preach fish fish seams fish seams fish seams yes because they're moving Fish are moving, and uh, who are you inviting? No, oh, you're talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so I should have warned you. Flatheads, um, once they come out, out of their wintering hole, they'll hang around for a little bit, I would assume, but they end up moving, and they'll go through locks. They run miles and miles, like 10, 20, 30, 40 miles sometimes every year, and they'll go back to the same spot every single year. You can catch the same fish in the same general area every year in some certain some circumstances so what they're doing is they're coming out of the wintering hole water's warming up they're moving they're going back to where they're feeding they're out there eating because they hadn't eaten all winter they're feeding running lanes so when you find that's why i would say fish seams pre-spawn because you can never go wrong fishing a seam and pre-spawn um for instance me and kimball fish seams two leagues ago yeah we should have had 12 flatheads that night we ended up catching seven, seven. which is a great night yeah. when we won league yeah um did. It was a good good night of fishing. And, and tight for Big Cat. Yeah. And that Big Cat was on cut bait on a seam, too, which is interesting. And um, uh, once they pre-spawn and they start going into spawn, they're going to find their spot. We're gonna, they're gonna either going to burrow into the side of the river on the side of a creek. Uh, they dig a hole. That's where they get scarred up. They're rubbing up on the where they're, they either find a log, empty log. Could be anything, honestly. Whatever they can get into to lay eggs. The female's going to lay the eggs. The male's guarding the eggs. That's how it works for the flathead. The male sits on the eggs. He guards them from the female, and he guards them from other fish coming to eat the eggs and the fry. So that's what they do. Once spawn is over, it's a different kind of fishing. You can still catch flatheads on, on seams. You can still catch them by creek mouths. But I always say when you're looking for summer flatheads, post-spawn, towards the beginning of the night, into the night, fish log wood wood that goes to the bottom of the river the biggest thickest dirtiest wood you can find i like something with structure if i see a tree floating on top of the river people are like oh, i'm gonna fish this tree well does it go to the bottom of the river because i don't really give a crap if it doesn't go to the bottom yeah so yeah 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 because by, right? yeah I, i'm sides so i'm uh, this i talked to this about dan the other week because this is yeah. when i'm using my side image i'm scanning i'm sitting about 50 feet off the bank and i'm running with my motor 
and I'm side scanning, finding wood that goes all the way to the bottom. Something with mass, something old. The older, bigger wood, the better, because it probably has the biggest flathead in that whole area for the most part. Um, obviously, um, there's been a guest on Catfish Weekly that talked about this when you, you feel like the bites kind of died off. It doesn't die off because they're feeding all night. You just got to change your position and fish something different, like a shallow flat or a creek mouth or something, because those, those catfish come out of the wood as a predator to eat your bait. Yeah. That's why I would say get the if you're not losing tackle the first time you fish a spot, you're probably not close enough because you got to entice them out. Their sensory organs, their chemoreceptors are crazy. They smell the water and they can see, sense vibration more than any fish in the river system. Um, it's just a crazy amount. Their whole body's typically technically pretty much a taste bud as the chemoreceptors cover their entire body mostly condensed in the face and the barbels but um so they sense the vibration they sense that so you got to get them to come out of that wood and then once you're like man this spot died well go try another log jam or go try a creek or go try a the edge of a sandbar or something and you probably find more feeding fish because they don't really stop feeding the fish are out there eating at night that's what they're doing those flatheads are ambush they're apex predators here in the river so um the oldest biggest wood and i think dan would agree when you find something that looks like it goes down there and it's got some mass to it i mean sometimes you get a feeling on a piece of wood that it's going to hold a big fish and it usually does uh, or a fish in general and sometimes you get like three little ones out of one tree and you're like well there's probably not a big one here yeah i think they're pretty uh um i don't know what the word is I don't think the big ones really like to hang around with the little ones in a, a structure. I think they kind of own the structure is how I feel it would be. Cause yeah. I feel like a big flathead would eat a small flathead. I'm almost positive. They will <laughs> oh, they, yeah. they eat bullets and walleye and sheephead. So how many videos you see on YouTube where there's, you know, two flatheads, you know, up, up in the surface of the water and one right. is trying to eat one half its size. So I got a picture here of, of um, Luke, some catfish that he caught with that underspin. For you guys to take yeah, a peek. All the way yeah. in the back of the gullet. All the way back. Eight pound braid. Look at the scar in its mouth from spawn. Yeah. So it was pretty is a little beat up, but it wasn't I don't even know if that was spawn. But yeah, that was 33 and three quarter inch. There's a little that's healing. That's healed. So I mean yeah. it's already already either it's you're just getting done and kind of chilling. Yeah, right behind the eye there. You can see but the yeah, it's got a scar there, it's yeah. got a scar in the back. And uh yeah, I got that on an underspin jig head for up, head up or up. It's nice work. Right on upper, yeah. <laughs> you know where that was. Uh, yeah. Cast it right into the little lagoon there. Uh, and it, first cast. Dude, that day I'm was... I'm sorry, Luke, but huh. if I know it, I mean, I'm sure somebody... Well, you that. you fish there a lot. <laughs> Is there enough people listening that... I was wondering whose dead bullheads were on shore right there. <laughs> Those were yours, weren't they? Were you, were you there last night? No. This, where did, you, did you fish there last league? Yeah. Because a couple nights ago I was there and there was dried up dead bullheads on shore yeah. pretty giant bullhead too it looked nice yeah it was it got all lazy our, all our bullets it got were, lazy but didn't no it? they're in a basket oh really all of them were gray <laughs> i was napping so Can i'm gonna do... put that on james oh, on, not taking on. care of the bait hold on so yeah this is the one i want to show you here ben ben rodriguez has a question for you or can you do channel cats and what they do as far as what ben um, he probably wants that same story on flatheads just I don't even because know. that was about seven minutes of pure gold for anyone who doesn't catfish. That would be a great seven minutes to yeah. listen to Luke. That was awesome. So I, I don't know about channel cats. I'll be honest. I kind of just chuck bait. I fish holes, yeah. fish wood. Don't even, don't even cast yeah. too far off the band. When they're spawning, right when there. they're spawning, yeah. I don't fish channel cats. Yeah. I have no desire. I really don't have desire to fish channel cats ever here. No. Except in league, when I feel like I should, because no. maybe get me and some then weight. it's not even worth it. Then. Right. I mean, um, but in terms of that, if Brad Dirks in here, he can maybe talk on what they do for spawn. I don't follow Red River channels at all. Um, I fish for them when they're not spawning, and I always fish the same yeah. stuff. They're on cuts. They're in wood. They're on front side of holes feeding. Yeah. Um, catch them a lot in the slack. Yeah, it's a it's a good a good place always to find a channel cat guys. Find structure. Or find the front edge of yeah. a hole because the feeding fish are typically on the front. Some people say later in the night the feeders go to the back of the hole. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but I always fish the front edge so, of the hole. What I've learned for so, channel cats, you want to catch them, you, you like the I fresh gotta, wood, the stuff with green yeah, leaves. Yeah, 100%. That's where the channel is. Because the smaller invertebrates and the smaller insects and 
Channel cats are eating it too. That's that's been my. You're right. Whenever I go target yeah. channels, I'm looking for big, freshly and what's downed interesting, trees with when, green leaves. You're 100 percent right. And when we go to Drayton, there's not a lot of fresh timber that falls there. So the old stuff's the only thing we really have for the Red River. And any stump that you see on your graph, me and my friend, my tournament partner Billy, we launched Drayton, and there was a straight stretch. Three stumps just sticking out of the water that went down about six, seven feet. Every stump we fished, we caught a 20 pounder out of. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Ben. <laughs> and that's side imaging, right? Or... We could see them physically. Oh, like... they were out of the water. Well, the. But did you see the cats I did behind not. them? We didn't even mark them. We just figured there'd be fish Do the there. Luke thing. Another question yeah. from Cat, Cat, Cat. Yeah, I'll take care Question of you. for you, Luke. You, you. <laughs> As someone also fished the Minnesota River about. How many weeks do you flatheads take to go through spawn? I think gestation's only like a week, but they're all spawning at different times. So yeah. um, someone can correct me if you can look up the gestation period for a flathead. I think it's about 10 days, I believe, which means they're laying the eggs, prepping, laying eggs, and sitting on eggs for 10 days. But they're not all spawning at the same time. So there's always fish to be caught. That's yeah. the thing. That's the yeah. main thing. There's always fish to be caught. And you'll notice during spawn, you'll probably catch a lot smaller fish, a lot of smaller fish, because they're not fighting with the bigger fish to get bait. I, I think when you find that first one that's beat up, it's usually about three weeks. Yeah, and you're, then you you're can about right. Start going on to your next. Yeah, pattern. it's about a three week span when they're spawning. I mean, it's that water temp thing, 70 to 75 degrees, they're spawning. And that water went up to almost 80 degrees for a while, and that yeah. kind of pushed the spawn pretty early for some fish, I believe, what happened. Scott, yeah, we're at 79 it, right it now. It I never believe. really. This is the least dead spawn I've ever seen because people are still catching fish like continuously. So it's not like the river kind of died. For channel cats, there's been a couple years in the Red River when I lived there when I could not catch a channel cat. And that's the most dense channel cat population in the world. And so it was hard to catch a fish. That's all I catch when I go out here. Yeah. Channel cats. They're not very big either. You can't use wax worms, Chewy. Four or five pounds. No, I, I <laughs> catch them in, uh, what do they call the worms again? I don't know. <laughs> Let me look at it. <laughs> That's a good. Yeah, riffle hole run. That's Tara's right on that. That's the first place I caught my first twenty-five plus pound channel cat was a riffle run in two feet of water. Riffle on the run. Riffle run. That's where there it is. There's a riffle. Ten and then days there's the shoot, station. But usually after the riffle, there's a, a hole, and it's not big. Tara, fishing. I don't know. Ten days. Like, I feel like she just googled that. Weird. I was right. Who would have thought? You know what I mean? Um, Tara, did you Google that? <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought i was right gosh sometimes you just know you know Ben, you don't target channels james says <laughs> <laughs> <That's your answer. laughs> that's funny the reason i don't is because one flat because elite, they're not because they're because they don't have weight to them because they don't have weight and <laughs> Especially on the 2 to two p.m. to 2 a.m. contest where they're definitely guarding their wood and definitely guarding. So spot to spot is the way to go. Yep. Yep. And he, like James is an older fisherman. He likes to sit and wait. And yeah. he, so I, I tend to do half and half, nope. you know, I'll kind of bump, 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 bump. In the bump, summer, wait, I, in bump, summer bump, bump. I ain't waiting. After spawn, no way. Find the fish. They're going to eat. They will Typically, eat. if you're in a good spot with really good structure, some old wood, they're typically going to bite in the first 15 minutes. Yeah. Because if they're not, if they don't come to your bullhead in the first 15 minutes and you have an active bait, they're probably not eating or they're not in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, dude, they're, I've had at times where you drop it in and two seconds, two minutes later, a minute later, they're yep. already on. Yep. And a lot of our bites were when we showed up to spots. Yeah. It's interesting. But... They're good spots, and they're known for holding fish. So Yeah, if you're in here and you don't catfish, flatheads are not bottom feeders. They're as big as a bottom feeder as a walleye. They eat stuff. They eat everything. There's no fish tougher and meaner in a river in Minnesota than a flathead catfish. They will eat everything that swims in front of their face. Give them a, give them a 14-inch walleye. If a 14-inch walleye swims by a 20-pound flathead, it's eating it. Yep, yep, for sure. <laughs> Without Scott, a doubt. Scotty has a message for you. Oh man, he's here. <laughs> he said Dan he's home. Dan just naps. Well, you know what Scotty does? He doesn't show up for podcasts. 
Yeah, it's Scotty. Scotty, Scotty no show. Seconds into a <laughs> Scotty, yeah. no show. So I want to show uh, you guys real quick here the drink that uh, Dan got. Yeah, that's from our ladies at Lisa's place. Yeah. What, what is that? Look at that thing art. Do. I don't just know. Decoration? Yeah, just decoration? Yeah, they're pretty yeah, excited. Yeah. It's pretty I cool. ordered a there six pack, and they were like, well, you're not going to have a drink. I like how the bobber sits on top of the drink. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. She actually ordered this, and then the other bartender oh, brought in this little. I need one of those. I gotta go pay him. I gotta get one of those yep. sometime. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna cost you. I know. I figured so. Maybe a couple of years. <laughs> You'll get something like that. <laughs> Most of my flats came on cut bait. Yeah, my biggest uh, the year so far is on cut bait. Uh, well, second big, second biggest of the year was in league, last I'm league. That one. That was on a little piece of cut sucker. On a just on a all oh, mine have been on me. Yeah. I got 240 and a half Tyler, this year. Those are damn. my big ones. Tyler Dane, little one that uh, most of my flats came on cut bait, and they're all on Wednesday yeah. nights. Some people is he from here? Are you from here, Tyler? What state are you from? I don't think he is. He's holding a blue cat, I think, in his picture. I couldn't tell, but yeah, dude, a lot of people love cut bait for flatheads, and I think it really depends on what river you're fishing because. I'd rather have a big live bait on and a big log jam. Or what available Dominic. bait you have because getting Still live bullheads and keeping them alive is a lot of work. Use a Dominic, use a uh, live drum, man. I had the I don't know how big the flathead was, but I fished the Croy. The Croy holds the big biggest drum. flatheads in the state, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Uh, I, uh, you can have a couple hooks on there over Tyler there, Dean. right? Minneapolis. Minneapolis yeah. Yeah. That thing. Some people like the cut bait for the uh that's for the a, flatheads, that's he says that's a forty-six uh, pound flat. What is? The, are you talking about the one in your in your profile picture? Yeah, I there, can't Tyler? see it, so it looks blue from here. So it, it looks like a blue, but your picture you got to remember with your picture is really tiny on. So here. anyway, that's a nice flat, buddy. Nice work. That's a great flat, St. Paul. Yeah, it's a good St. flat. St. Paul is awesome. And yeah, you should post it on the. Uh, if you if have you catch it on it, pool one or pool one or pool two. Don't tell Luke. Just, well, just post it. <laughs> no, don't tell them. No, just pool kidding. one. Pool one doesn't have a boat ramp. Uh, pool one does not have a public boat ramp. It has a DNR <laughs> ramp that's close to the public, oh, and it's probably the least fish flathead fishery on the Mississippi River. Well, I guarantee you, it is. Pool two. Oh, that okay. was a joke, by the way. So Luke's willing to give away all his flathead knowledge. <laughs> you guys should probably just send out your best spots right now. I don't know about that. I'm gonna load a picture here of the worm. It's I don't know how do you pronounce and it. I don't know if it's catalpa taken. worm. Catalpa? Yeah, something like catalpa that. Catalpa worm. So, anyways, we brought these in last summer. The Not worms? a lot of them, yeah, because we, we were we brought some other worms to try out that some guys wanted to for pan fishing. Yeah. So we saw them, we knew about it, so we brought them in. And this is uh, the picture is not that great, but yeah, that's the worm that is supposedly like in the south. It's like candy for shallow cats. Mm. Oh, I'd and, use that for pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> you start selling those, Chewy. I'm it mad. sounds like a good eater bait. Yeah, it eaters. does. It does. Because our, so you got to remember, our cat, our channel cats up here are way bigger than the ones down. Oh, that'll yeah. catch anything. Yeah. yeah, that's something they haven't seen. That's one thing we have. So that's interesting because we have, on average, our channel cats are much larger than down south, but their flatheads in. are much larger than ours. So it's kind of a flip flop. They have a lot bigger. They catch hundred pound flatheads down south. Right, right. It's catching a seventy in some parts of the country is like. People just do it, you know. Catalpa worms. I'm you get a gonna... seventy in Minnesota. Not only is that the state record. Um, All right, I gotta go. You just don't see a lot of them. There you go. In. <laughs> sit here, sit your ass down. I got my boat right outside. I can see it right now. He's already talking right about it. We just started. And I haven't caught a fifty, <laughs> and I've been chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. Now the legend, John Kramer, is showing me his spots because I was like, hey, buddy. I need some help. I'm getting my ass kicked in league. Oops. I was like, will you teach me how to fish your spots? Sounds like, like Dan's going to get some lessons tonight. I am, and it's I'm good. always willing. It's good. But there's one rule and one rule always. Let's hear it. We're going to be keeping some flats. Well, that's not good. That's not good. It'd but not huge ones, flats. right? No, 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 no. I don't mind keeping flats. I, just... I won't. I won't let him get his hands on the big ones. Don't worry. <laughs> I was gonna say you're, you're going out with big, big buddy there. He, yeah. yeah. If Good. for some reason that hook lift rips right out of its lip tonight, at least I got to see it. But what did at least Dominic Johnny, say? Johnny won't ever listen to this. So Dominic, you know what, buddy? It. I tried love drum a couple weeks ago. And my first run on it, but I had an 8.0 J hook with a decent sized drum on it. Completely boofed the hook set. 
had it hooked through the nose. Dang. That's rough. Yeah. I had a giant one on the Croy on a 12 inch drum, maybe 10, 10 inch drum. And I had this, it just got inhaled. And uh, anyways, I lost the fish. I didn't get a hook in it. But moral of the story is you can catch flatheads on pretty much anything. Yeah. I mean, in Wisconsin, you can use walleye as bait. You can use anything as bait. It counts as your daily limit. But it, if you're on it, I don't know if it's just inland water. I don't know if it's counts in the Mississippi too. But inland water, for sure, you can use anything as bait. It just counts as your daily limit. Sure. So with that said, I want to go to Wisconsin. I want to catch a flathead on a walleye. <laughs> that's my goal someday well, that sounds someday. fun that sounds fun and then then getting into bait bait choices for any time for flathead fishing i guess we can talk about for channel cats it's easy um anything that's natural to the water that you're fishing like on the red river gold eye is really good frogs are really good suckers are okay um but cut gold eye cut suckers frogs sometimes creek chubs are okay but frogs and gold eye are always kind of the primo baits for red river channel cats minnesota river bullheads are great suckers are good and this is just live uh, creek chubs are really good bluegills bluegills are great on the mississippi on pool four on the wisconsin side of the river <laughs> See, yeah, he, he's getting better at it <laughs> i have to think of another way to throw him off no he ain't throwing me off so that's the law if you guys don't know if you fish pool four don't fish pool. if you fish pool four or anywhere below prescott pool three down from prescott down um, anywhere on the border of Wisconsin, if you have a Minnesota license, you can use bluegill on the Wisconsin side of the river. So you have to obey the laws from the river you're on, but you can use two lines on the Minnesota side, but you just cannot use bluegill on the Minnesota side. So it's kind of a weird law, but in case you're curious and wondering, that is the law of the land. Whatever anyone tells you, that is the law. No matter what any of your buddies said they talked to the DNR, yeah, that is the law. True can only use bluegill on the wisconsin side of the river which is um in writing the middle of the river and over because on the map it kind of shows that the middle of the river is not always the border yeah. but that's what they kind of go by when they patrol it so it's middle of the river over something to keep in mind if you do want to use bluegill on pool three or pool four you need to be on the wisconsin side and then transferring bait there is also an issue so kind of got to watch where you catch your bait because we have laws here, so thou must follow. So the blue, the bait. So, so the bait has to hit the water between the middle to the bank Wisconsin. of the Wisconsin. Yeah. I was pretty sure what he's saying. Be is, we can't bring sunnies from here over, over yeah, to Wisconsin. Pretty sure we can't. Yeah, we can't bring our bluegills to Wisconsin to fish. No, no. But I mean, bluegill. if you're on the Wisconsin side, let's say you're in a boat. Yeah. And you're a quarter way in, and you cast over half of the, of the river to the. It's where your boat side. is. First off, nobody ain't fishing in the middle of the river. I know, but I'm just saying. That's not true. Okay. We'll talk to the okay. one of those guys in the what is it? It's one of them king fishers. Dead middle of the river. Yeah. yeah. Do you do that all the time? I was, I was Minnesota? Just yeah. Some people. But well, why? Is it structure maybe? No, is they're just finding there? the movers. Sometimes movers. you catch flatheads in the middle of the river too. Sometimes they just take the lane and go. I mean, I know Darren, Detro, he's... He's like cast it on the middle of the river. Sometimes he's out with Kimball and he'll catch a big flat. I read an article that some flatheads after they after they Bring eat chat up. after they eat they 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 suspend. Yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah, I read just, it. Just, yeah, you might have read it, but I don't believe it. And just float down. <laughs> they just suspend. They say that they suspend to uh, help digest their 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 meal. Oh, he saw us. Uh, I think they just chill on the bottom and digest. See, there you go. What did looks what did Scotty want? That was probably. Did you just skip Dominic's comment? No. Can we talk about it? Oh, I thought you were. I, did it come Dominic, Dominic said he saw me with Spencer, which is Bauer. River certified, if you yeah. guys don't know. He was out here. He's kind of famous. A couple times last year in the catfish world. Yeah. He's well, very well, well known. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting at here. What are you trying to do to me, <laughs> ghoster? Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> Spencer Bro, he's a great guy, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember, I think you messaged Spencer on Instagram. He said, oh, someone was on shore that spotted me because you can't miss his Cubs hat. So yeah, we got done with the catch and cook that day. And then you, you probably watched that video, but 
Yeah, he's been here a couple times. I took him and his wife out sturgeon fishing, and then I took him out catfishing and sturgeon fishing. Yeah. And Scotty was probably when he came up for the podcast. Yep. That is correct. Yeah, that's correct. I was in really tough shape. No kidding. Yes, sir. Was that me skipping over him, or what was that? Yeah, I almost oh, smoked so... him during league. Oh, that's sitting in the middle. That was Donnie. Oh. Donnie in the Kingfisher. Um, fishing in the middle of the channel above the rapids. Yeah, that's where he always is fish. Is he listening? That's he's a he's a veteran. He's back from Bell Plain Catfish yeah. League. He's been around a long time. Yeah, I was so watching him. the giant drum. The woods is where it's at. The wood is where it's at. What's up, Derek? Damn, Derek, you look good with your shirt off in your picture, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> Damn. I want to fish. That Muscular, um. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Blue Cap. That's right. So I'm wearing my shirt today, guys. You guys, rec- anyone recognize the shirt? Well, you got, yeah. <laughs> this shirt. Anyone recognize this shirt? Catfish, bro. I couldn't wear my Muddy River. Usually Jeez, I wear my Muddy River to the podcast. I'm wearing Catfish, bro. I wore it yesterday to the game, so. <laughs> Sooner or later, Chris will send me a Muddy River hat. That's funny. <laughs> so, bait. We're going to get back to bait. We kind of lost topic here. If you want to, if you want a bait that's lively, that'll stay alive all yeah. night. Real quick. Top, top five, top five baits for, for what? Flatheads. For flatheads? flatheads? Yeah, top five. Here, well, it's different here, here than know, well, here. down south. Yeah, um, bullheads, creek chubs, suckers, okay. suckers, bluegills up top with bullheads. If you if you're on the border, bluegills great. And then bluegill and bullhead are one and two. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe a crappie. Whatever way. Well, you don't well, really. Let's say bullhead because we're in Minnesota. Bullhead. Bullhead. Yeah. And then asterisk sunfish Chicken, for border. Chicken liver, you worms, hot dogs. Creek you can pretty much throw anything after Hot dogs, those three. chicken yeah. breast. No, I'm just kidding. No, come on. No, but seriously, after those three, you can pretty much throw anything on the hook, right? Yeah. Bullheads. Creek chub second. Suckers third if you can keep them alive. And yep. other than that, cut them up. But other Dan's up. wearing a clean yeah, shirt. Yeah, you missed it. He's a clean boy tonight. He's a clean boy, yeah. He didn't even tell me well, what the heck, Ron. Ron, clean, man. It didn't Ron we were going to have you as a guest like... tonight, but yeah, um, we were a little late. I was like, he's pretty far away. I don't know if you're still in uh, STP or not, but let me know. For Fresh. shrimp, yeah, yeah, shrimp, shrimp are yeah. good for chans. For channels, yeah. Mm-hmm. I never heard of for flats. Tim, have you caught no. one on a with? Uh, I caught a flat with shrimp. Nobody's gonna go target flatheads with shrimp. You're not gonna waste that size. <laughs> How do shrimp. you know? How do you know? You're, gonna, eat, you're gonna you're gonna pay probably that's an impractical bait. Twelve twelve Gar- ninety nine for that size shrimp. Garlic shrimp with Kool Aid. Garlic <laughs> shrimp. That's a great <laughs> idea. I'm gonna make garlic shrimp. Let's get like a if six you could inch get, long. If you one. could get like a live moon eye, because there's moon eye in the Mississippi too. Yeah, yeah. Live moon eye would be amazing for flatheads. Uh because gold eye in the red, cut gold eye is great. Yeah. Drum head is my favorite. At oh channels only yeah. yeah people so people up in Selkirk Manitoba on the Red River a lot of those people run shrimp yeah uh, oh not, he's been down at the compounds for three I, days I use frogs yeah he's out over in uh, down south oh I thought here no he Fro- didn't come Fro- to the cool spot frogs Moon is a lot of worse in Mississippi Moon eye, yeah I never catch Moon eye I want to go I should go up to Pool Two Dam and catch some because typically like Gold Eye and Moon Eye different they're different species they look very similar. Which um, is the one that stinks? Neither. Oh, Shri- that's one of the shad fish that I caught one time. Uh, uh, the river's slim, pretty, a little long, and it stank, dude. Huh? I what don't was know. it? Chewy. Where'd you catch it? Uh, right here, right on here. Sheephead? Uh, no, no, it wasn't comment. a sheephead. I didn't know sheephead. It was it's like short, sheep. long, stank. Huh. <laughs> short, long, no, kind of shiny. No comment for Luke's. Wasn't mom. a shad? They reek. I don't, maybe. Did you snag it? it? No, no. What did you catch it on? A little tiny jig. Could have been an adult oh, shad. Actually, I was trying to catch a carp. So, so shad are filter yeah. feeders, but once you get once shad become adults, they'll actually eat small, really small tungstens and stuff. Like they eat small bugs when they're adults. They don't only filter feed. Catch moon eye on the Minnesota and Shakopee. I've never caught one, or I've never tried I've never either. Heard of it. That'd be kind of cool. I'd love I'd to use ask. a live moon eye. God, that'd be so sick. We'll have to ask Jake. Would it stay alive? Probably not. But man, it'd be it. great bait. Tim, that'd be great, babe. How's how's Tim doing, by the way? I've been down at the campsite. Oh, he's on the YouTube side. 
Does anyone have any other questions for Flatheads for Old River Dan, Two Cat Dan, or myself? Danny Two Cats. Danny Two Cats. Not Danny Two Cats is ready for the wrap up because I want to go fishing. Oh, he's he's antsy again. <laughs> que hora es? Oh, it is. It's almost been an hour already. It's been an hour. It's, uh, Holy cow. Yeah, we're doing we're her tonight. Hour today. Yeah, it was fun tonight. Yeah. That was a quick little one. Tara is going to be on next weekend, guys. Next yeah. Wednesday. We're going to talk about her flying trip in Ontario, Canada. She got a couple firsts, or at least one first. Pretty cool stories. Um, I haven't really had a chance to chat with her. She sent me a couple video clips. Um, one's on her YouTube, but she can talk about that next week. Next Wednesday. All right. What is that? Mercules? Yeah. Right? Mercules. God, I'm killing it right now. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mercules? Yep. So I think, I think we're going to call her. Um, <laughs> make sure you guys check out my new video on YouTube. It's up Wait. right now. Oh. We got Chewy trying to cut me off for the eighth time on this podcast. Hold on, hold on. All right, let's hear it. Why are you in such a hurry? He was in a hurry last time. We quit. And where you know, was he? Was great it? Point. Where was he? Where he was, was at he? the bar for an hour. He was with us for an hour. You were. You didn't go. And we're fishing. gonna we're gonna quit right now, and we're gonna go over there. We're gonna be another. You're gonna another go to the hour. bar, aren't you? No, I got to meet Johnny Jordan access eight thirty. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Well, that's yeah, better. Right. That's better. But make sure if you guys do want to come in, come into the bait shop sometime. Say hi. Um, I recommend. Give the bait shop a call before you come in if you're driving a long distance because yeah, both owners, you guys, have full-time management careers. So it's not always easy to find help to come in here. And sometimes the hours say they're open and they might not be. People have commented to me about it recently a lot. Yeah. I said, just call in. Just give them a shout. Call the bait shop. If they don't yeah. answer, they're not there. All the locals, it, they're aware of it. Yep. When you're, and if they're not town, open, and if, if, go it, across the street, pop your head into Lisa's place, and ask him. for Danny Two Cats. I'll let you in. Yep. And if and if I'm near, if you guys can <laughs> message, not if they're not open, you guys, um, you can shoot me a message. I have the key. I can get you whatever you need. If I'm close, I will come and help you out. Um, I'm only 10 minutes away. So that's always an option. You got Dan across the street at the bar. I'm going to be. Or home. I have. <laughs> I live a block and a half away. He lives right I, by I, here. I can get you here. So just call in. If you want to stop at the bait shop, call in. They got the they got the hell. Sorry. Hey, don't get mad at the bait store. We gave you some options. They got some hell. <laughs> they got the Hellcats in right now. They got the Mad Cats in. Got them. They got the Catfish Pros in. They got some new rods, some new Okuma rods, some really um budget friendly rods that are uh pretty, pretty cool sweet. looking. Yeah, I was talking, sweet. they're very budget friendly. Yeah. They got some new reels in, new catfish reels. They got some cast kings. Um they got an Abu Garcia left on the shelf right now. Uh, terminal tackles, obviously, here. Chewy's going to be making more weights because he sold a bunch of them already after making some. So stop into the bait shop. But next Wednesday, we don't have a guest right now. I might find one, but Tara's going to be back, and we'll probably have a lot to talk about. So Yeah, I think we can fill we an can... hour uh, talking to <laughs> Tara. Yeah. I was... Tara's going to have a we lot to say. We were drilling Luke this week. Yeah. I didn't want to say the same thing. So, yeah. anyway. Hold on, there's something going on. Hold on, dude. You guys should carry my good one, Ricky. Man. That's a good one, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a very good one, Ricky. I work in task. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the point of the guys on the team? Would love to spot. Yeah, that's between uh, you and Chewy. Yeah, Uh-oh, no, I, 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 he's being funny right now. <laughs> Is there some history? Yeah. Oh, Rich. Oh, we we love Chewy? that guy. You know that sturgeon, the sturgeon rod, that ice fishing rod. Oh, you never got to see it. I never saw it. Yeah. That's the guy right there. I want to see it. Dan, Dan has let, let me in, in. in his lunch break from the bar. <laughs> 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 All right. Luke, where can they find you real quick, brother? Find me on YouTube, Fish on Luke. Instagram, Fish on Luke. TikTok, Fish on Luke. You can find Danny at Lisa's. Right, Dan? Yeah, we probably shouldn't start that. <laughs> <laughs> Chewy, send us off. Then it's gonna be all right, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk, buddy. Um, yeah, we got next week. We're not gonna have a guest. I don't think we are. We don't need one. We don't need a guest. We're gonna be fine. Um, but next week we're gonna bring Tara, so we're gonna give her um the time so you can tell her cool stories. Maybe she has a little clip we can put on for the guys that they can watch it. Um, so check her out. Um, Tara, is it Tara Lindsay? Tara fishing. Tara fishing. It's all Terra fishing now. Yeah. I well, you guys can see that in the outro. You can um, yeah. get rabbit from there. But um, we'd like to thank all you guys for engaging with us today. It was pretty, pretty fun, man. It was, it was a lot of fun. I agree. All right. All right. You guys ready? Danny Tukas needs to get out.
See you guys. Thanks. <laughs> yep. We're going to go eat tacos across the street. You're going to eat tacos. If you guys are near Carver and you guys want to come eat tacos with us, we'll be right at Lisa's place. Taco Wednesday. Yeah. Taco yeah. Wednesdays. All right, yeah. brothers. And Thank I you for joining us. See you guys. Yeah. See ya. Oh, it is him. Yes.